Hello everybody, this is Leon Hilbert aka The Professor and welcome to the second installment of the Sonic Racing Cross Worlds tutorial series. In this video we're going to be getting our custom characters model ready so that we can parent it to the skeleton that we ripped from the game. First of all, something that you're going to need is the Unreal PSK slash PSA uh, importing add-on. So, what you'll do is you'll go to the link in the description, you'll click Get Add-on, and you'll actually just drag and drop this into your Blender window, and that automatically adds the add-on to your Blender. Now, you should be able to, whenever you go to File, Import, you'll see Unreal PS Gaia. If you don't see this, then go ahead and close Blender and restart it, and it should appear. So, first of all, we're going to open up our model. So, let's import that. For me, I'm importing a BRM. And, there she is. Next, we need to import the model for the character that we're going to replace. So, let's import Unreal PSK. And then we'll go to our F model, output, and we're gonna look for Miku. So that's gonna be our exports, game, O2 union, asset, character, extend 10, mess, and here's our mesh right here. We're gonna double click that and import that, and you're gonna notice something here. Miku is very, very big. So. I'm actually going to select that armature and all of its components, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse to the right here, and I'm going to hold S, and I'm going to pull it out. And then just do that a couple times. And then, this is the important part, you're going to try to line up your model as closely as possible with Miku's model. Do not move Miku. Do not resize Miku. Keep Miku where she is, how she is. Move your model and scale it to match Miku as closely as possible. You want to most importantly line up the pelvis, the head, the arms. That most importantly, if you've got the spine aligned, that's the most important part. It's definitely helpful to get everything as aligned as you possibly can. Now, you may have some alignment issues. You can see, uh, Stagger's arms are much longer than me. Now, the way that we can fix the alignment issue is by resizing and moving the bones. But, um, what would be nice is if we can do this on both sides of the body at once. And to do that, you need to click this X right here in order to mirror it, but you'll notice it still doesn't work. And if you're... Armature doesn't follow the typical naming conventions, it will not. So, as you can see here, um, the upper arm here is named J Bip L Upper Arm, and that is not the typical naming convention, so it's not going to work with symmetry. What you can do though is delete the L here and add dot L to the end, and then do this on the other side as well. Delete the R and add dot R to the end. So now whenever we try to scale or rotate this, it will do the same thing on the other side. So if you need to move or scale some bounds in order to make it fit the in-game model, go ahead and do that at um, delete any L or R that's already in the name of the bone you need to move and add a dot R or a dot L depending on if it's the left or right side to the end of it so that that way it will scale correctly. So I'm going to go to scale and I'm going to scale this way. And there we go, that lined up Stagger's fingers with Miku's fingers. And her elbow is still a little bit off, but that's not a big deal. You'll see why later. And next thing we need to do is adjust the fingers. So we're going to go in and rename those bones real quick to the typical naming dimension so that we only have to do this one time. And so it will be so that it will be copy on the other side and be perfectly symmetrical. 
So to find the fingers, I'm going to go down the upper arm, then um, hand, and here's all the fingers. We're just going to have to move the first fingers here. I just want to spread the fingers so that they match Miku's. So I'm just going to remove the L's, and I'm going to add dot L to the end. And make one final check to make sure all of your fingers are named the exact same thing. The only difference between them should be the dot L and the dot R at the end of each one. So now that you've made sure that they're the same, let's go to rotate. And let's rotate Stagger's fingers ever so slightly to fit Miku's. Might actually rotate Stagger's hand, I'll style. So I'll go rename her hand. And I'm just gonna rotate her hand just a tiny bit and spread the fingers just a little bit more. I'm trying to line up the middle finger the most. Then I'm going to rotate her thumb at Miku's and a little bit more this way. And there we go. This is far from perfect. Oh, you may also want to, um, up just a little bit yeah you can do some more editing in this exact same way you can uh, you can scale the bones this way um, you can rotate them you can shrink them you can scale them whatever you need to do to you know, make you feel like your model is lined up as closely with Miku's bones as possible and you do want to do this part first before you get on to the next steps because it'll be hard to impossible to do this part later. So now that that's done, another very important part is combining your meshes. This is going to make the next steps way easier. Now there's something that you need to chat. Um, we're going to hide Miku real quick just to make it easier to see what we're doing here. So, for Sagger, her body, her face, and her hair are each separate. Now, before you go joining them, you need to check something. You need to check the name of the UV map. I'm going to show you what happens if your UV maps are named something different. So let's just name it this UV map something random. The UV map on the face is named UV map, and the UV map on the hair is named gibberish. So, let's... Select the hair, hold shift, select the face, and we're going to press Control J. Now do you see what happened? The texture for Stagger's hair disappeared. Let me show you the reverse so you can see what happens if we press the face first and then the hair. Control J. And ooh, wow. Yeah, so that happened. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, if your UV maps are named different things, it's going to mess a lot of things up. So what you want to do before you join your meshes is you want to go to each of your meshes, the hair, the face, and the body, and make sure the UV maps are named the same. We find hair and we go, oh, it's not named the same, so we're going to name it to UV map. The same as the face, the same as the body. It doesn't matter what you name them, they just all need to be the same as the face, the same as the body. So now we're going to press the body, the face, and then the hair. We're going to press Control J. And everything was combined perfectly. They all have one UV map that's named UV map. And all the textures are appearing as they should. So if you... Try to combine your meshes, and one of your meshes turns into one solid color. It's the UV map issue. So, m make sure of that. That's very, very important. Do not neglect that. Before we start deleting Stagger's bones, and before we start renaming her Botex grips, you're going to make sure you're in object mode. Click on your character's mesh. 
go to modifiers and you're going to see the armature modifier here. Once you've moved all of your character's bounds to match the in-game model and you're happy with it, you're gonna go to this modifier, you're gonna click the drop down menu and you're going to click apply. That is going to apply the... Oh, whoops. Okay, I just ran into an issue. If you, like me, are using a VRM, you need to remember that the V-Rig model has shape keys and you, you can't apply modifiers to any mesh that has a shape key. I'm, I'm glad that we came across this issue. So you're going to have to delete each and every one of these shape keys before you can move forward. So let's do that right now. All you have to do is click on the shape key, start at the bottom. If you start up at the top, it's going to start applying some of the uh, facial shape keys to the model. So you want to start from the bottom and move to the top. Just press the bottom most and press the minus button. Then do that for each of the shape keys. Okay, so now that all of the shape keys are deleted, you can go back to your modifiers, click the drop down menu on the armature modifier, and click apply. That will apply all of the changes that you made earlier to uh, the mesh. You will notice that if you try to move these bones, they will no longer move the model. That's because the armature modifier has been applied and is no longer active to be able to move the model. Now you need to um, go ahead and delete your model's own armature, but you don't want to go over here to the list and delete the armature. Let me show you why, because this is what will happen. It'll delete your mesh as well. So what you're going to do is click on the armature, your character's armature, go to edit mode, click A, and then press the delete key and press bones and this will safely delete all of the bones later on we will delete the leftover armature and since this is a v-right model she has a lot of colliders i'm gonna go ahead and delete those too you can safely delete them they won't affect anything and there we go now our model is completely ready to start the vertex grip renaming process Thank you all once again for watching this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video. You're dismissed.